Jump rings literally hold the jewelry world together. Today on Homestrung Jewelry, we're going to talk about the proper way to open and close a jump ring. Jump rings are one of the most valuable tools in jewelry making. They can be used to fasten on a clasp. They can be used as a bell to attach a pendant to a necklace or to an earring. A group of jump rings can be linked together to form a chain, or in this particular case, to make an extension chain for a necklace so that the necklace can be adjusted. And jump rings by themselves can be linked together to make an entire piece of jewelry that's nothing but jump rings. But it all begins with properly opening and closing a jump ring. Now to begin with, let's talk about the different types of jump rings. Jump rings generally are made in a factory and they can be done one of two ways. This is an example of a pinch cut jump ring. Okay, a coil of wire is put onto a machine, it is run, it is shaped, and then it is literally pinched off at the end. You don't get quite as nice of a finish. It has this little kind of cut section there and it's never going to come together perfectly but this is adequate for attaching a you know a clasp or something else they're inexpensive they can be picked up at almost any kind of a craft store and they're just they become the lifeblood for years for attaching things and for extending things and holding things together now a little fancier is what we call a saw cut jump ring in this case wire is coiled around a form and then a saw is run along the top and it cuts it pretty close to perfectly. Now there's always a little bit of a gap between the two, but when these two ends are pushed together, they can almost disappear. These are more expensive, but if you're making jewelry, fine jewelry, or if you're doing something like chain mail where the entire piece is made out of jump rings, then you might want to go this way. Now let's talk a little bit about the tools. Just about any kind of a plier can be used for opening and closing a jump ring. I personally prefer to use a pair of flat nose pliers because I can, I have a lot of gripping area or I can hold on to the jump ring very well when I'm going to open it. But not everybody has those. Bent nose pliers are popular with a lot of people in conjunction with another plier. And if they're held like this, then again, there's a lot of area here that's holding on to the jump ring so it's less in kind and less inclined to slip. And just about every jewelry maker has a pair of chain nose pliers and these can be worked as used as well. Uh, you don't want to come in point to point. You want again to have as much gripping as you can holding onto as much surface of the jump ring so it doesn't slip. So you come in like this and open the jump ring. Another thing when using jump rings and you'll notice this in all of our videos we don't put our tools down much. We hold on to the tools, and if we need to pick something up, we use you know thumb and finger to pick up the jump ring, and then we can hold on to it, grab it with the, the pliers, and then after we're done, after we're done, we can move it aside. But when you put a jump ring into place, if you have to go look for your pliers, quite often it will fall off. So it's nice to get in the habit of just holding on to your pliers all of the time. Before we get started, it might be a good idea to talk about the wrong way to open a jump ring. And we see this all the time, where somebody will come into a class, they'll grab hold of the jump ring, and they will force it open. They will literally pull it apart like this, fasten it to whatever they're going to fasten it to, and then they try to push it back together. And they'll pinch it around, and what they end up with is a misshapen jump ring that's not going to be strong. You know, the jump ring literally can become the weak link in your jewelry, the part that fails. And we see a lot of people that bring jewelry into the studio and uh, they say it's broken and we'll check it. And the only thing that's wrong is there was a jump ring uh, that fell that wasn't properly closed and it slipped off. The proper way to open a jump ring is to grab hold of it from the two sides. and then with a twisting motion open up the jump ring. Now if there's a little bit of a gap 
you'll also push in a little bit and then you bring it back and if you've overcome that gap you'll hear that click as the two ends come together and you check it from the top because sometimes there's a little overspring and you need to work it back but check it and make sure that it's back together and if you do it properly the gap will all but disappear now with chain nose pliers he says you grab it up along the side and then again you twist it open pushing a little bit of inward pressure to overcome the gap bring it back together hear that little click check it from the top make sure it's together there's a closed jump ring with the bent nose pliers I bring the curved end in again so that you've got your you've got as much of the pliers holding on to the jump ring as you can come in with your other plier on the other side twist it open twist it back hear the little click check it from the top to make sure it's back together and another one now what about a little tiny jump ring okay in this particular case to get in here I'm going to use the chain nose and come in straight on but my other pliers again you just twist it open and bring it back check it from the top from the sides to make sure it's back together and there's a closed jump ring one other method for opening a jump ring is to use something called a jump ring tool this is actually a ring ring and you can pick these up in some craft stores and most uh, jewelry you know jewelry shops bead shops will have these and what it is it's a ring that has different size slots in it and uh, what you do is you find a slot that roughly coincides with the ring that you're going to be using you just put this on a finger you are still going to need at least a pair one pair of pliers you hold on to the ring put it into the slot and again you twist it open after you've done what you need to do with the ring fasten things you can just twist it back these things are relatively inexpensive if you go shopping for them uh, if you see a price of like twelve dollars or so I'd probably keep shopping I think this one was like two fifty or three dollars they do come in different sizes uh, they're relatively simple to use I don't use them a lot but for hardcore uh, chain mailers people that go through a lot of jump rings they like these if you have to open several hundred jump rings at the same time this can save you a little bit of time let's make something this particular project is a pair of earrings and I'm going to just use seven jump rings for each earring and then I also have these little three millimeter rounds and then we also have an ear wire which we're going to hook the whole thing together you start by opening one jump ring and these are just these inexpensive pinch cup jump rings that you can buy anywhere anyway we open it up we put our little metal ball on and we close close the jump ring open a second jump ring open it up fasten our little three millimeter bead by the way these jump rings are seven millimeters outside diameter uh, five millimeters inside they're a one millimeter diameter wire uh, there which is roughly 19 18 gauge and they're available just about anywhere before we close this jump ring we're going to fasten it to the first one and close the ring up check it from the top go to the second ring or the third ring excuse me 
open it up, feel that little scrape of the two edges coming together, so you know there's not going to be a gap where the other rings will slip through. Fasten it into the other jump rings, and we're forming a chain here. seventh and final ring and we hook it in at the end of the chain and before we finish here we're also going to put our ear wire in And there's our earring. Repeat this with seven more, seven more jump rings. And of course, you can make this any length that you want. Uh, you can make it have five rings, three rings, nine rings, make a duster, whatever it takes. If you've enjoyed this video, we would encourage you to go ahead and subscribe to our channel and also hit the like button. If there are projects which you would be interested in in the future, please make, make a comment down below. And also all the materials that we used in here and the tools that we use will be listed in the comments down below as well. Thank you and we'll look forward to seeing you again soon.